biggest bear that I've caught so far in Denali National Park. A bear capture. It is rather invasive. Fortunately, it's a relatively short period of time. We dart them from a helicopter. In a perfect world, when a capture goes exactly the way we would like it to, we can get in on an animal and get a dart in it and have it down within sometimes a few minutes. My name is Pat Owen and I am a wildlife biologist at Denali National Park in Alaska. I'm actually a, a pretty good shot, I guess. I was given the opportunity to do some of the darting work and turns out that I, yeah, I usually manage to hit them. So <laughs> that's a good thing when you're doing this. I have a what's called a shooting door on the helicopter. The whole window in the helicopter slides down, so I have a big open space to shoot through. As soon as we got up close to him and I was ready to dart him, I realized he was very large. I really had no idea at the time just how large. I put a 7 mil dart in him, one this size, which is um, pretty typical for what I use for most male bears. This will usually take down a male pretty quickly. He turned around on us and made right back for the trees that he'd come out of, and we were a bit concerned about how we were going to get him out of there. Typically, when we have an animal that gets into the trees like that, our strategy usually is to haze them out. So usually we get on the opposite side of where we want them to go, hoping that they'll run away from us. In sort of strategizing with my pilot on how we were going to get him out of the trees so that I could get another dart in him, we tried to haze him out and he really wanted nothing to do with that. And so what we realized that we needed to do was that we needed to get down there in front of him and make him charge us, which was exactly what he did. We got down low and he came rip-roaring out of the trees. I think if he could have gotten a hold of us, he would have been a really happy bear. After I darted in the second time, he actually went down very quickly. When I landed the helicopter, grabbed all of my gear, climbed through the brush to get to where he was, and I looked down at him, I immediately <laughs> realized I had no idea what to do with this bear because he was way bigger than anything I had ever dealt with before. We did all of the things that we typically do. We took blood, we, did, we took a hair sample, we put a radio collar on him. We got ready to weigh him. And we pulled over our 10-foot tripod, um, rolled him into our 6-foot square net, and were barely able to get the net up around him. And that should have been my first clue. Hooked him up to the, the tripod and cranked him off the ground. We were just able to get most of his body to clear the ground. His nose and one rear paw were still touching the ground because we ran out of space. We didn't, we couldn't crank him up any further based on the 10-foot tripod. The scale maxed out at 803 pounds. It was by far the biggest bear that I've ever handled here in, in at least on the north side of the Alaska Range. It was a charge. It was a full-on charge. Yeah, and that doesn't typically happen. So, um, I think he's meaner than the rest of them. <laughs> I think he's very successful is the thing. <laughs> he's going to be, he's going to live to be a, a ripe old age. Yeah. 803 pounds. That was, yeah. And he managed to keep a radio collar on for, let's see, that was in May for most of June and most of July. So we managed to keep a radio collar on him for about two months. I was actually surprised it stayed on that long. He was probably the biggest, meanest bear I've ever encountered. And all I can think of is I hope I don't encounter him if I'm ever on the ground out there. <laughs>